Hello YouTubers and welcome back to the Dennis Bloodknot channel. Now this part today, this video today, is part three of the Nikon D750. Hello and welcome to the Dennis Bloodknot channel. versus Nikon D7000. Hello boys. I bet you're a bit disappointed, aren't you lads? Comparison. And in particular, we are looking at the video quality of both cameras. I have made changes to the settings on the D7000 and so see what you think. Hello YouTubers and welcome back to the Dennis Bloodknot channel. Now in the previous video, part two of the Nikon D750 versus Nikon D7000 comparison, I mentioned about the issue that the D7000 appeared to be overexposing. So I did a little bit of investigation. There is a particular video online in which a YouTuber, and I hope I've pronounced his name correctly, Martin Doppelbauer, does a comparison of an APS-C camera versus a full frame camera and makes alterations in terms of focal length. And aperture settings in order to even up the situation between the APS-C and full frame cameras. So I have made an adjustment in this video. The D7000 is now running at f2.8 whereas previously it was f2.5. Both cameras are running at 150th of a second shutter speed, 24p, and or to be more precise, 24 frames per second, 1080p, and they are both running at an ISO of 100. So this does give you a chance to compare the two cameras. But of course, although they, the image quality may look pretty close now, there are the advantages that the D750 has in terms of the fact that it can do 30 frames per second, 50 frames per second and 60 frames per second, which is what I'm going to show you in the next part of the video. OK, so I have now changed the frames per second and the shutter speed. Both cameras are now using a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, but the D750 is now actually filming at 60 frames per second. Both are retaining their previous um, aperture details, so f2.8 for the D7000 and f3.5 for the D750. The Nikon D750 is currently using the 85mm Nikkor G lens and the D7000 is using the 50mm lens. So you'll be able to see what happens when the cameras are running at a shutter speed of 1 60th and the D750 at 60 frames per second. See what you think. And so YouTubers, there we have it. The Nikon D750 versus the Nikon D7000. For video image quality, even though I made the adjustments in this part of the video, 
um, I would give the video image quality to the D750. Not by a massive margin, but I would say things like skin tones look more accurate on the D750. That is to my eye and looking on my monitor settings. Admittedly, I don't know what your monitor settings are and I don't know what YouTube will do in terms of compression of the videos when you actually see this particular YouTube video. On the other side of the coin, for still images... Again, I would give the advantage to the D750, but only by a small margin. And when you throw in the fact that the D7000, with its kit lens, the 18-105, to can be purchased here in the UK, this lens and this camera, for around £250 as a good quality used buy, when you compare it to the D750 with this lens is around £800 as a good quality used buy. It depends on your priorities. As I say, I purchased both cameras brand new uh, and I am very pleased with both of them. If I were making the used purchase now and I had the budget, I would go for the D750. If my budget was more limited, the D7000 is certainly a very good, good quality used camera for both stills and for video. Anyway, many thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and Dennis Bloodnot will return in the next video. One thing to say is that in terms of the Dennis Bloodnot channel, there are a few changes afoot. A few new things will be introduced to the channel over the next few videos. So stay tuned. Thank you.